Okay, peeps. Just coming to you live with bathing and baths for guinea pigs. Most guinea pigs have different lengths of coat and that is one of the reasons why we may choose to bath or not bath a guinea pig. But first and foremost, if they've got a short coat, they actually don't need any baths. They're a bit like cats and they like to keep themselves clean. If you're housing them correctly, then really there's no need to be doing regular and often baths. It's really more the case of once in, in a blue moon. So it comes down to how you're housing them and looking after them. If you've got guinea pigs that have longer coats, then it's a different issue because those coats tend to pick up and drag through on the ground uh, where they have of course suffocated and they get messy. So we need to look after that. Other issues with um, why you bath guinea pigs are around the actual housing component. So I've already touched on that with longer haired guinea pigs. But if you've got short haired guinea pigs and you haven't um, tended their cages really well, then of course we can have issues around that, they get dirty. So with those piggies, um, they may also have other issues like mites and mange that we need to have a reason to bath them. Now, as often as you see photos of guinea pigs out there that look really comfortable in water, guinea pigs don't swim. So the real risk here is what we call aspiration and that is where guinea pigs can breathe in water. It can go in through the mouth or up through the nasal passage and if it gets into the lungs it actually causes a really severe form of pneumonia and they will die from it. So that's the high risk. and. The problem is, if they're very close to a water um, body, then, then of course the risk is increased. So something to be aware of. Okay, all piggies are different. So what that means is that if you're new to having a guinea pig pet, then you don't know necessarily how that little animal will react when you give it a bath. So it may look very cute and comfortable in the photos that you see online, but that's not necessarily what you will experience when you go to bath your guinea pig. So your first and foremost number one consideration is first thing, do we need to bath the guinea pig? Secondly, if you do need to bath the guinea pig, then doing it in a way that is completely safe so that you can become familiar with the process and that your guinea pig also can settle and know that it's, it's something that's okay. Um, guinea pigs all have different temperaments and they're all going to react differently. So you won't literally know until the point where you bath them. So in rescue, we have everything from guinea pigs that have been well loved that come to us to those that are free range. And believe me, they will scratch and carry on where you really need to know what you're doing to ensure their safety above everything else. So the way that you hold them and the technique that you use is something I'm going to share with you here. First rule with um, bathing a piggy is that you have an area which is relatively confined so that you can control the animal itself in that space but also where you can keep the level of the water very shallow so I like to have it around this sort of depth which would be for an adult guinea pig which is roughly up to sort of halfway up their thigh to give you an idea. I use a small tub like this and I'll fill that water you can even see where I sort of use the water level repeatedly up to this this point and only ever bathing one guinea pig at a time. So if you are seeing photos and images of a number of guinea pigs, the question then becomes how do you manage three at once? Now if they look all calm and they're familiar with the process, it gives everyone a false sense of security that their little herd of animals will be fine too. That's simply not the case. It also is something you need to look at for drying guinea pigs. The water that we use always needs to be comfortably warm. They have the same body temperature bar point, 0 0.02 um, of a degree, so pretty much for all intensive purposes the same as us. And we need nice comfortable water for them to be in. But if you've got a number of guinea pigs there, when it comes to drying them off, you can only deal with them one at a time unless you've got a number of people doing that. So always bath one piggy one at a time. It also enables you to ensure that you can take care of that guinea pig regardless of what happens. Its safety comes first. Okay, second thing you need. So first thing is a bowl and a safe space to bath them in. Sometimes, um, you know, a bathroom sink is quite a confined area. A bathtub, you've actually got issues with your back and bending down and you've also got the length of the, the space involved. So it's not necessarily an area that's easy to 
to, to work within. So I'd rather something at desk height or where you can actually work simply. The next thing is what you're going to put the guinea pig in once you have washed the guinea pig. So having the guinea pig ready to bath, having a bowl, having a towel ready, and of course, the substance that you're going to use to bath the guinea pig with. So let's talk about those substances because there's been lots of questions on those. What is a suitable thing to wash a guinea pig with? You simply can't go and get any shampoo and apply it to your guinea pig. You run the risk of actually burning their skin, damaging hair follicles and causing serious injury unless that product is suitable for guinea pigs. Now I've seen this in rescue where I actually had a guinea pig come in that had been bathed in a dog shampoo and it had actually taken the entire strip of fur section off the back of the guinea pig. It never regrew. So that's a warning to everyone out there that the substances you need to use for washing need to be suitable for guinea pigs. Okay, the second thing that we need to look at, we've got a, someone pulling up on a truck or something. Okay, so the second, oh actually let's run through those substances a bit more. In, in different countries, you have different products available to you. So here in Australia, we have different products to someone who is in America and the UK. Some similarities and some, some others that differ slightly. So later, we'll create a list of those down the bottom so you can easily reference them. Here in Australia, there are a number of them that you can use. Um, Johnson & Johnson Baby Shampoo, which is pink in colour, is quite safe to use, but again, we are actually rinsing off everything used. I recommend um, Maliseb, which is a product used to maintain their coats, but it's also an antifungal treatment. So if you're actually using Maliseb as a wash, anything that might be harboring in the coat, it instantly takes care of that. But there are other washes that I use, like Alavine and Oatmeal, which are fantastic and there's also some guinea pig ranges which are really suitable as well. So again, if you've got a favorite which is um, non-scent based or a preference, then then you know we'll pop those in the list down below so you can refer to them because some of them smell really beautiful. Another one that I really love actually is uh, Fido's uh, rinse, rinse. The, it's the uh, rinse, Fido's concentrate rinse, I was trying to think of it. But it, the scent, I really love that. But the product is actually suitable for guinea pigs. So we'll make a list of them down below and you can refer to them. So to be ready for bathing, you've got your bowl, you've got your towel ready, you've got your um, product that you're going to use on the coat and you know why you're going to use it. Another thing you need to have ready is perhaps um, something like a comb um, or a brush depending on what you're actually doing and I'll take you through that in a live video it's a video not a live it's filmed live and I'm going to upload it shortly so that you can see it where we bath a number of them and you can see why we might use those so you need to get everything ready first before you bath your guinea pig the last thing you need to get ready is around the temperature that you have in your room so if you're doing this outside and it's a very hot day, you've got temperatures that are very warm, then it makes sense that you can bath your guinea pig and that you can dry them off comfortably and they can finish their drying while they've got a lovely warm air temperature around them. If you're bathing them indoors, you need to make sure that the temperature is warm. Um, then supply a warmth pad or a bottle of water on the side so that if they do still feel cool, they can go to that and completely make sure they're thermoregulating properly. Okay, my guinea pig today <laughs> is a little tiny one that I had uh, given to me, isn't it gorgeous? But I want to show you how to hold a guinea pig so that you know what you're doing when you're bathing them. The hold is really important and I never recommend you just put your guinea pig in the water and let it stand. You don't know how that guinea pig will react unless you're extremely familiar with your pet. So for people, newbies out there that are looking to bath their guinea pig and think this is very exciting, you need to consider why you're doing it, is it really necessary, and then when it does come to doing this, that you hold the guinea pig safely. So the method that I use is, it's a, easy to see if I tip the guinea pig upside down, but you can see his right paw, there's piggy, his right paw goes between, and I'm just trying to think, yeah, it's usually this way, goes between either of these two fingers, but what it does is it isolates this leg so that you can control any movement and the guinea pig can't run away from you or jump out or launch itself in any direction. On the opposite side, 
the left leg is in front of my hand so it's a way to actually hold them your fingers go up around either side of the neck and if you're doing it this way again up you've got one one finger underneath the neck supporting and again up around the neck of the guinea pig in all instances as long as you've got this front right paw isolated like this in some way between one of these fingers your guinea pig and you've got this group your guinea pig can't jump out can't launch itself can't flip over and panic where it could then breathe in water and aspirate so we don't want that to to happen so that's the way that we actually hold the piggies um, with bathing once you've got your piggy you can hold piggies safely in the water in that way so I've got the bowl there safely in that way and you can see why I've filmed the other one for you and shampoo product on the back of the guinea pig you can use a bit of the water to lather it up like you would your own hair so working it through we only wash from behind the ears down we don't wash forward of the face and there's a different way that we deal with that I'll go through that later but um, washing from the ears down we also don't put water inside the ear canal so again we deal with that differently so washing the coat down working through this is where you may if you've not got any really solid lumps or knots but you've got a little bit of a light gathering you might want to just use a comb there to move that out because having the water around the base of that hair can make it easier to, to move um, but yeah so you lather it up and then using your right hand or if your left hand it's going to be the reverse but using this hand you're then going to scoop the water over the guinea pig which is rinsing off the coat once piggy is rinsed off again you've got good support still underneath and around the guinea pig still unable to move and run away you lift the guinea pig out straight into the towel where you can bath said guinea pig and look after him or her so there's some of the issues that we need to to look at hopefully you can practice that hold so that you know how to do it safely now coming back to what I mentioned earlier every guinea pig is different so your guinea pig if you're a new pet owner you don't know how they're going to react when it does come to bathing it's really important that you are calm that you have everything ready in the way that we've been through and that when it comes to actually doing the process of bathing that you hold them in that secure way so they feel comfortable they feel safe and that you can um, finish the process that way as you get to know your guinea pig and they become more confident and more comfortable then um, you can be a little bit more liberal with them personally I don't recommend it I think that you should always hold your guinea pig I feel that they're safer like that um, please remember that they are prey based animals and that a sharp loud noise or something happening could make them jump and if they're in water at that time it could be detrimental to to the outcome okay drying guinea pigs again in the towel I recommend that you hold them for up to 20 minutes lap time it gives you personal one-on-one -on -one time and give them a treat as well give them something to reward them for the the process that they've just been through but while you're holding them you can actually briskly just wipe over their coat which helps dry them off a bit like you would do with your own hair and once you have dried them then put them down but always make sure there's a warm bottle or something that they can go to just in case they're still feeling like they want to warm up a bit more if the weather is really hot then of course you don't need to worry so much about that if you're using a blow dryer again it's a bit like blow drying your own hair you would need to agitate that so that the heat doesn't concentrate in one area on the animal and we never ever blow dry on the face so holding the piggy away from the blow dry you can blow dry the hair and the sides and the coat one thing to note there is that some of the products that you may choose to use if you're treating mange for example and you're using maliseb you definitely cannot blow dry a guinea pig after you need to have that guinea pig dry naturally so that the the uh, product is doing doing the work that it needs to do the heat actually deactivates a lot of it and stops it from working so there's lots of considerations there in bathing a guinea pig if you do have questions I'd ask you to pop them down below
Creating this community, I do want awareness around guinea pigs that you can get the sort of knowledge that I've just imparted with you so that you can look after your guinea pigs in the best way possible and knowing why you're doing it. Okay, I guess that's it from me guys. I hope that you're all having a fabulous day out there. We're really, really busy. I've got so many updates to share with you and uh, there's lots going on in the background as usual. But if you do have questions, please pop them down below. I hope you've enjoyed it. I love seeing you here and I love seeing all of your input and questions. And I look forward to uh, speaking with you again soon. Bye for now.